Hey everybody, it's Meredith Besh, Clarity Coach and creator of Pause Box. Today I'm jumping in to um, give you a little, um, a little primer on the ways we, or the excuses we make to kind of play it safe. And the reason this is coming up is, as most of you know, I have an amazing group program coming. Starts next Tuesday, if you can believe it. It's called the Creator Academy. It's a 90-day soul radical to powerfully create your next chapter. So obviously I'm having conversations with people about jumping into this container and really stepping into what's next for them. And I think it's just so helpful to share some of the, um, feedback I get when I, I'm i in these conversations. Um, some of it's plain old objections and some of it is, um, I think, just a ton of limiting beliefs. And sometimes, hey, it's just not a good fit and that's totally fine. Um, but these are sort of three main um, kind of excuses people give when they are playing safe. And um, it doesn't have to necessarily do with choosing a coach. It could be you know, putting yourself out there for your next role, your next promotion. It could be um, putting yourself out there as um, creatively, um, as an artist or um, a writer. Uh, it could be putting yourself putting yourself out there for a, a really powerful new relationship. Um, it could be starting a weight loss program. Anytime we step into something that is um, kind of bigger than who we are now, um, these kind of excuses get triggered. So I thought I'd share them because I think they're sort of universal and see which ones you relate to. So the first excuse is now is not a good time and it usually is followed by I'm too busy. And um, this is legit. I mean, it seems legit because we are too busy. We're overloaded with noise and, and craziness and demands and um, the women I'm talking to are for sure very, very um, busy and overextended. But um, I think where we get tripped up is you're too busy for business as usual. But usually if you're starting something new and you're dedicated and committed to that um, intention, you have the power to um, change the way you think about time. So your capacity with time does change because you are focused, you are clear, you set boundaries, you prioritize. So anytime you hear yourself saying, now's not a good time, I'm too busy, think instead about how can I get clearer, more focused, and set some boundaries so that I can really prioritize this thing, right? The second um, excuse people give to play safe is I should be able to do this on my own. Now, this is never something that actually is said out loud, but it's this um, undercurrent of self-sufficiency that I, I relate to so much and I think is just prevalent in our culture. You know, it's this notion that I, um, I should just take more classes or I should be able to figure this out on my own. Um, I'll just Google it. Um, and what that misses is it misses this notion of, um, I've talked before about hyper-independence can be a wound. It could be a result of never being able to rely on people, never receiving from people. It um, is often a sign of just not feeling worthy of, of resources and, and, um, and help. So whenever I feel that feeling of like, well, I should just do it on my own or I, I can figure it out on my own, um, that's when I call in a more gentle self-compassion about, hey, listen, transformation is, is tough and doing it alone is um, kind of usually the slowest path. So what if, what could be possible if I actually got support along the way, right? Big, big new worlds open up with that. The third excuse I often hear is, um, I will wait until I have dot, dot, dot. Usually more money, but sometimes, you know, until I have more uh, skills or training or etc. So what this discounts is the fact that when you are certainly in a coaching program, but in any other, um, when you apply yourself with intention and focus and um, you're in a container of support for that, 
it really is an accelerator. So what the question should be instead of I'll have to wait till I have more money is more that how can you afford not to do this, right? How much is the status quo costing you? What are the opportunity costs and what are the energetic costs, right? This is like, usually these are people who have been in ruts for some time and they're still waiting for the day when they quote, have enough money to do the thing that they really wanna do. Now, I'm not saying be um, irresponsible with money. I'm not saying overextend yourself, but I am saying, ask yourself the question. Can I really afford more business as usual? And if not, what's the thing that I'm going to change to make this thing happen for me? Um, because where you invest is really where you prioritize. And um, I think that's the opportunity. When you look at, when you put money on something, you are laser focused on seeing some um, traction. So I see that as an opportunity for huge commitment. So that's the, that's the third excuse. And then um, just in general, I wanted to share kind of what I think is behind a lot of the resistance to stepping into playing bigger, to use Tara Moore's expression that I love so dearly. Um, what you might really be afraid of is what if I fail? And maybe more scary than that, what if I succeed? What if I succeed? What if everything I ask for, wish for, hope for, I get? Because here's what's, what's unglamorous about really beautiful change is that there's a fear of who will I disrupt as I own my own power. And that can be you disrupt your family life, you might disrupt you know, the role you have in your siblings or with your family, you might um, start getting more attention, um, which might create um, envy or difficult conversations. So change is change. It is a real process and there is real resistance to um, playing bigger. It's just true. Um, so in my, in my experience, playing bigger was not something I could do on my own. Um, though I gave it a good healthy try. Um, it's always been um, more accelerated, deeper, more powerful in community, um, certainly in the community of peers, but also with amazing mentors and coaches. Um, you know, inner critic, sometimes we can't even hear how harsh we are on ourselves until someone else is there to help us see it. So there's this whole um, beauty that happens in a coaching relationship where um, if a really good coach can can point out or mirror what the the prevailing inner critic message is. And those are those limiting beliefs that we often get um, stuck in. It's those ruts that we just keep going back and forth and we can never quite get out of. Um, so a lot of times we, we choose the devil we know. We choose like, well... I'm uncomfortable and this is painful and I'm, you know, I'm not really satisfied and kind of low energy, but hey, if it means I don't have to fail or succeed, then cool, I'll just coast. So a lot of times that's where people are. They don't want to think they're there um, because it doesn't sound like the thing you're sh you should be. But, um, you know, our our usual... Um, habitual patterns are, are legit forces and they need to be taken on squarely and, um, and with compassion and um, with smart, powerful, loving guides. So that's, that's my share today. I hope um, if you saw yourself in there, I certainly saw myself in, in all those excuses. I've, I've used all of them and sometimes I still do, especially the one about time. That's, a, that's one that I'm always thinking time scarcity people. Um, but I forget, when you, when you actually prioritize stuff, you have time for it. Duh. All right, hope that was helpful. Play big, and uh, if you or someone you know is in a position in their life where they are ready to step into that next powerful new chapter in their life, hook me up. I would love to um, meet them and support them. Thanks, guys. Bye.